maybe I'll look like less of an egg if I sit back here. Okay, so this is actually an answer to a subscriber um, who is a new believer um, and is coming out of kind of like a Pentecostal type system. A lot of these types of churches will take advantage of their congregants. Um, and not just Pentecostal churches, like so many churches, prosperity preaching ones and even some Baptist ones. Like they're just so many churches filled with hirelings. They want to make merchandise out of you. Um, people want to put you into bondage and fear and basically make you feel bad for like having a roof over your head, clothes on your back. And it's because they cannot rightly divide God's word. When I talk about right division, I'm talking about differentiating between passage passages that are pertaining to um, salvation and some that are about discipleship. You know, sometimes salvation can be eternal salvation. Sometimes it can be talking about physical salvation. Um, you know, and, and sometimes you just, you got to read the context. You can't just take one verse and then make a whole doctrine out of it. Um, what I want to cover in particular today is going to be in Matthew chapter 19. Because I hear this one a lot. Actually, I've heard this one a lot. And before I got saved, I kind of struggled and wrestled with this one as well. I'm going to go ahead and read from Matthew chapter 19, verse, uh, verse 16. Sorry. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Okay, so people will often twist this and they'll say that um, you have to keep the commandments to be saved. And this is like a proof text for that. Uh, it's not, and I'm, I'm going to break it down for you like I normally do. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to use another verse afterwards to prove this. Uh, I just want to make a point though. Um, a lot of people, this is, this is a little off topic, but just, Try to follow along. A lot of people will say the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are two different things. Um, they're not. And this is actually a good proof of that. When Jesus says in verse uh, 23, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, so he's repeating himself, I say unto you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So he said, he worded it differently. But he said the same thing. He was just illustrating a point. But um, he equates the kingdom of heaven with the kingdom of God. So let's just clear that up right now. Um, okay, so the man, the rich man that came to him was asking him what good thing he must do. Okay, to um, that he may have eternal life. So he wanted to know what he had to do so that he could earn it, basically. Well, what, what good thing can I do? And Jesus said there is none good. He's saying it right there. <laughs> there is none good. Um, but if you wanted to, basically, is what Jesus is saying. If you if if you had to if you wanted to uh, enter into life, keep the commandments. Okay, so we know that nobody has ever kept the commandments. Okay, um, Jesus is trying to bring this guy to the end of himself. He's he's obviously got some pride here. He really thinks that he has kept the commandments from his youth up, and he hasn't. He hasn't failed at all, but, but we know that that's not true. So Jesus wasn't, um, wasn't trying to tell him, keep the law and you will be saved. He's saying, if you want to be able, like you yourself of your own volition, 
you want to enter in to the kingdom of heaven, then you need to basically be perfect. Okay. And so the young man said, I've, I've kept these from my youth up. What am I lacking? And for Jesus, it's like, this guy doesn't get it, right? He hasn't recognized that he, he's imperfect. He needs a savior. So he says, if thou wilt be perfect. So he's telling him, you're not perfect, but if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. He's telling him and then follow me after. Okay. So the young man went away sad. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't just give up, get on his knees and be like, wow, I need a savior, Lord. <laughs> He, uh, he was upset that that's what he had to do in order to enter in. Um, and his disciples, they heard it. They were like, well, then who can be saved? Because they recognized the impossibility of this. Um, and that's why Jesus told them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So what this, what this doesn't mean, Jesus is not saying that, well, if you believe in God, he will make you be able to keep these commandments perfectly. It's, that's not what he means. Um, he's just saying it's impossible. Man can't save himself. Man can't keep the commandments. It's not going to happen. Um, that's why you need a savior. Sorry, I got a text. Um, and that's why it's only possible with God because we get Christ's imputed righteousness. Okay. Um, and that's all this is saying, guys. So I hope that I hope that cleared it up. Don't, don't let anybody put you into fear and bondage and tell you you have to keep the commandments and you have to sell everything you have and you have to, you know, live this way. Um, a lot of things Jesus was telling people to do too was in order to be his disciple. He would say like, um, unless you do such and such a thing, you cannot be my disciples. He's not saying you cannot be saved. He's saying cannot be my disciples. And so there was a purpose for the disciples in, in this time during his ministry. Okay. And even his disciples were like failing all the time at stuff. Okay. So they were, they were just learning. Um, and I just want to go just speaking on the, just getting back to like the commandment keeping or whatever for salvation. Um, people will say, okay, well, um, the, there's like a bunch of old, old Testament, like ordinances that we don't need to keep, but we still need to keep the 10 commandments. Um, and then some people will say, which we don't, we already proved that, but some people say, well, we don't have to keep the law, but Jesus made a new law where we have to love God and love our neighbor as ourself. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to disprove this right now. Go to Matthew chapter 22, um, verse 35. Okay. And these are the Pharisees and in verse 35, it says, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? In the law. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. A lot of people stop there and they're like, see? We have to do this now in the New Testament to be saved um, or to prove that we're saved um, or to be a disciple or to follow Jesus or whatever. Okay. Um, but he just said those are the greatest commandments in the law. And if you keep reading in verse 40, it says, Jesus said on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Okay. And we know that Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Okay. He fulfilled the law and the prophets. Um, and by the way, the law never saved, even in the old Testament, they were saved by faith. They were justified by faith. They were made perfect by faith. Okay. Um, just as we are now, they were saved looking forward to the cross. We are saved looking back at the cross. Um, so he says right here that loving God and loving your neighbor is the law, because if you, you know, if you love your neighbor, you're not going to murder or steal or bear false witness. And things like that. If you love God, then you are not going to, you know, commit idolatry or such and such. Another law. Anyways, it's all hung on those two commandments. So, no, we do not do that to be saved either. Okay? Um, let go of your burdens, you guys. Um, I'm just going to read you one more section uh, about burdens. Okay? Because people just, 
they're spying out the liberty that we have in Jesus. Okay, that's what's going on. And you have a bunch of pastors that are a bunch of hirelings and they're just want to make money off you. Okay. Um, in chapter 23 of Matthew, if you go to, I'm going to read from verse one and then I'm just going to stop. Then speak Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Okay? And that's what's going on. You know, it was going on in Jesus' day with the Pharisees. It's going on now in the church. Things haven't changed. Um, that spirit you know, of the Pharisees is alive and well today, and it is in the churches. Okay. I mean, not just the churches, like, I guess you can call any kind of self-righteous person a Pharisee, but it's, it's rampant in the church. You have a bunch of people who, who are, you know, law keepers and they're, they think they're law keepers and they are putting these burdens on people and they are shutting up the kingdom because they're not giving them the gospel. They don't, they don't even know the gospel. They don't believe in it. They don't know it. And they themselves are not going in because they themselves are not able to keep the law like they think they are. So they actually lower the bar for righteousness to whatever um, laws they, they have the ability to keep. And that's their standard of righteousness. And they put that onto other people. They project it onto you. So, no, please, if you're listening to this and you have people telling you that you have to start giving like 10% of your income away to your pastor um, or God's going to curse you, or you are not really saved unless you like live with the bare minimum, please don't do that. It's not, it's not necessary. Um, you're, you really don't have to do that. Um, and you know, if you're doing that out of fear, it's not even for the Lord anyways. Right. So, and you're not doing it for other people. You're, you're doing it because you, you think you have to, and it's out of fear. So don't do that. If you feel led to give, then give. Um, if you want to give to the poor, I mean, I wouldn't be personally, I wouldn't be giving money to a pastor who's living in luxury while, you know, the congregation is struggling to pay their bills. I mean, if there's somebody that, you know, personally, even in your life, they might not even be in your church, um, who needs help and you have the means to do it. Don't do it. If you're broke yourself, please just, you know, <laughs> God's given you enough to just pay for your own bills and not much left over. Just don't, don't give that away and be like, well, God's got to give me some more. He's got to bless me for giving. He's already blessed you by giving you enough to pay for your own stuff. So, um, if you have the means to do so, please, um, help somebody out. Okay. But don't go and sell, think that you have to sell all that you have. It's, it's not, that's not what that passage means. Um, if you're in a church that is making you feel this way, I would very softly correct them. And if they don't hear you, I would leave. Um, it's, it's very hard to find a church that's not in either total heresy, like totally a false church, just prosperity church, a church that's using you for money, um, a church with the hirelings, a Galatianized church, anything like that. Like they're all, the state of the church is very sad right now. Um, and I think that's a sign that, I think that's a sign that, you know, we're, we're maybe coming close to something. So I, I don't know though. So please don't quote me on that. Um, you know, you need to, you need to read the word of God for yourself. Um, and don't let people like ev even everything that I say, go back to the Bible and just compare it. You know, I hope when I tell people what chapter and verses I'm reading, I hope you're following along so you can see it as well. Okay. Cause it's not my goal to, um, confuse anyone or to put anybody into like, you know, um, condemnation or anything like that. I just want you guys to feel free and understand the rest that we have in the Lord and just, you know, feel God's amazing grace and share it with other people. Um, it really is amazing. I, I too, to my subscriber who was struggling with this, um, 
I, I was under this kind of bondage before too in my first church because I had a couple that my husband and I were under their teaching and they had told us, you know, it was really awkward too. They invited the pastor of that church over to our house to do a Bible study with us and they were preaching, um, I think it's from Malachi, I, I, I'm pretty sure, and they were preaching about tithing and they were saying like, you have to give or God's going to curse you. Um, you're robbing God if you're not giving 10% of your income. And my husband and I were like, we don't even have 10% left over. Like, do we need to move to a cheaper place? Do we need to, you don't have to do that. And I mean, this couple did it in front of the pastor too. And he's just like smiling and like going along with it. And, um, it's sickening really. Um, God is not going to curse you if you don't give 10% of your income to a pastor. Like, please don't let people twist that and put you into fear. Um, these same people uh, wanted us to donate to their Filipino cult somewhere. I don't remember where in the Philippines it was, but when we told them we didn't want to, they, they completely ghosted us. So they're just, you know, give your money away, give your money away. Like they wanted us to go broke like them. Like they were always um, struggling because they kept giving all their money away to these like weird churches and they had to pray all the time for money to like, you know, fix a small part in their car and just like the, the most, ridiculous things that if they just you know didn't give all their money away then they wouldn't be struggling so hard and anyway it was stupid because it wasn't even for anything good they're giving their money away to like false churches so um if you have the means to do it and if the lord is leading you give and if you have more than 10 percent and you want to give and bless a church or a family or anything like that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that 